The biggest problem with longevity studies today is actually a two-part equation. We're gonna break it down and we're gonna also understand based upon this, how we can change how we eat, how we possibly live our lives, and just the overall things that we should be looking at. So let's break it down. After today's video, speaking of longevity, protein is very important, and I popped a link for Sun Warrior's newest protein line, their active protein. This stuff is awesome. I am someone that consumes whey protein powder and plant-based protein powder. I do both because I see benefits in both. And the cool thing about Sun Warrior's active line is that it's not just a protein. It is like a full spectrum nutritional protein shake. So they're utilizing pumpkin seed protein, which is a very good high potency plant-based protein powder. But then they're also having digestive enzymes in there. There's also minerals, there's also vitamins. It's awesome and it tastes unbelievable. So people that know Sun Warrior know they have been around for a very long time. So that link down below gets you 20% off whatever you want from them, including some of their active bundles, which includes their pre-workout, which again, coming from Sun Warrior is super dang clean. They have a hydration product, they have their protein, they have their active creatine, which tastes amazing. They have a bunch of different things. So even if you wanna get a bundle from them, and I'm just indebted to them. They've supported this channel for shoot, going on a, like a decade now, like seven, eight years. Like they were one of the original sponsors on this channel and their products are legit, which is why I stand behind them. So say what you want about sponsors, but this stuff is legit and it's a product that I actually use. So that link down below is for 20% off whatever you want from them. But again, try the Active Line Protein Powder or the Sun Warrior Warrior Blend Protein Powder. Down below, 20% off. Most longevity studies look at very isolated diets. They do not look at whole food diets. They look at things in isolation or they look at what are called purified diets. Like in rodent model or monkey data, when we're looking at longevity stuff, it's almost always a purified diet, which means they are giving them nutrients in isolation, like one type of protein, one type of fat, one type of carb source. As a matter of fact, one of the most infamous monkey studies that proved that caloric restriction works, and I say that in quotes because it was very flawed, they fed them one singular type of protein, they fed them one singular type of fat, soybean oil, and they fed them sugar. They fed them straight up sugar as their carb source. Now, I mean, to be real, they also gave them cornstarch too. So cornstarch and sugar, okay? That is a purified diet. And then they would add some supplementation in to make sure they got to 100% of the RDA of specific nutrients. It is like a Franken diet, right? Not to say that all diets look that way, but we have to remember something. Probably the biggest flaw that's not actually part of my study or my talk today. And that's the fact that like, we can't really do longevity studies in humans. Like no one's gonna be around 150 years from now to see who won this race. So we're doing it in animals. And that sucks because the data is not as good as we would hope. But we have to do that, otherwise we have no picture whatsoever. Okay, so with this, when we are looking at these models, it's so difficult to have them eat in a realistic way. And that leads me to the next problem. The next problem is these diets are looking typically at obese subjects and that caloric restriction benefits longevity when you're comparing to an obese subject. They're not usually looking at healthy cohorts. Now, that being said, you know, we're looking close to a 50% obesity rate. So, I mean, to look at an obese, overweight subject is not wrong. A lot of us are overweight and obese, so whatever. But that's not practical to say that like, hey, by taking an obese person and restricting calories, they're gonna live longer. You can't say that and say it as a blanket statement to say that caloric restriction is gonna make you live longer. If you have hypernutrition or overnutrition where you're eating too much, and where you have severe adiposity and central adiposity and visceral adiposity, then sure, caloric restriction makes a lot of sense because you have weight to lose and having extra weight is going to impede your ability to live a long, healthy life. So yes, but to say that caloric restriction is going to make us live longer is somewhat flawed. And then we look at this one study that was published in Nature, and I've talked about it many times, but it's the other study that looked at monkeys that found that Caloric restriction did not give any benefit when it came down to life expectancy with these monkeys 
if they were eating a whole food diet. So when they gave them like a wide spectrum of nutrients, a wide spectrum of protein, a wide spectrum of fats, a wide spectrum of carbohydrates, plus an additional 40% above the RDA of specific vitamins and minerals, caloric restriction made pretty much no impact on their life expectancy. It did affect their mitochondrial health because it's a hormetic stressor, and that's a different discussion for a different day. Like, basically stressing the mitochondria by being in a caloric restricted phase can make the mitochondria more resilient, which might improve your health span, but it certainly wasn't improving lifespan. And we learned from this that there are major flaws. So even when we look at like the blue zones and we say, okay, well they live in a calorically restricted fashion, do they? Or do they eat in surpluses sometimes and sometimes in deficits? And do they move around a lot? And do they have healthy relationships? To say that caloric restriction is the king here is a big problem. So the two big things that we need to fix in how we view longevity, one, let's stop starving ourselves Okay, let's focus on repair and recovery and performance and how we feel and eating to our heart's desire with good healthy food that is hard to overeat. Because there was another video that I did a while back looking at calorie dilution compared to restriction. It found that when you actually just eat ad libitum with foods that are not calorically dense, lots of fiber, lots of fruit, lots of lean protein, you pretty much end up in a deficit anyway and you improve your metabolic rate because you're eating so much. It's not about burning hot and dying young. That's not how it works. You don't eat so much that you die young. It is about adequate nutrition, adequate antioxidant, adequate protein, and caloric restriction occasionally as a stressor. So what does my diet look like for this? My diet looks like a lot of fruit, a lot of meat, a lot of good wholesome dairy, a lot, a lot of exercise, and more food if there's more exercise, and periodic fasting to add a stressor to the mix. Now, if I wanted to get more particular, I eat probably about 40 grams of fiber per day. I probably eat about 200 grams of protein. I probably eat less than 100 grams of fat these days, and I cycle my carbohydrates and fats accordingly depending on how active that I am. But the one thing that is the most important is I stopped my fixation on calories and I increased my fixation on nutrient quality. And that is that. I'll see you tomorrow.